What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Dark Magician Duelist and I'm doing a guest upload on the Creative Duelist channel just because I can. I felt like maybe I could help him out a little bit and give myself some exposure too. So I decided to do a little quick video for him about how to be creative as a player. I think it's really important to figure out new ways to be innovative and creative instead of just doing like what everybody else does. So I came up with five really good ways to remain creative and to play differently while playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Alright, so my first suggestion is to try to find different archetypes that have natural synergy with each other and combine them together to make a hybrid deck somewhat of a hybrid deck. Uh, one of my favorite examples, probably my favorite example of this, is Light Sworn Burning Abyss. Um, Light Sworn Burning Abyss is a really, really consistent deck. Pretty much you open two BAs and you just make a Dante and mill all your Light Sworns to grave. Uh, the Light Sworn draw engine is really good. Um, it's not as consistent as it once was because we now are now in link format, so you can't just spam out Dantes. However, when the Link Monster for Burning Abyss comes out, I feel like that deck will be possible again. So, I really think that something like Light Sworn Burning Abyss, which allows people to be creative and figure out, you know, different ways to play and different ways to run archetypes together, that really helps you out in terms of being creative. Another one that I'm working on right now is Invoke Spellbooks. So I'm going to probably be building that deck sometime over the next little while. So yeah, it just comes down to like finding different archetypes and being able to know what to combine and what to make while being able to keep the decks consistent. That's the key. Number two is to deck build constantly. Deck building increases your ability to know what cards work with others as well as just helps you practice the game. Like Deck building is everything in this game. If you know how to build a deck well, you'll be able to build pretty much anything you want just because you know ratios, what cards work in main decks, what cards don't, what should be inside instead of main, what extra deck works for you, all those kind of things. But one thing that I really think is important for deck building is just straight up ratios and tech choices. Ratios because it helps you build a more consistent deck. Tech choices, there are some really innovative cards out there that people don't use. Like Droll and Lockbird wasn't really a thing that people cited. They, you know, used to play Mistake and cards like that until people decided, oh my god, Droll and Lockbird's broke. It's a hand trap. People started maining Droll and Lockbirds or at least citing them. So yeah, you might be that one person who finds out that one cool tech that you just decided to happen to play just because you were creative and found a tech choice that everybody wanted to play. Just research. Research is what I should say here. Research cards that you may not have heard of before. Number three, play decks that do more than just one thing. Now, I don't mean just like one type of summon or one type of game mechanic. I'm talking about summoning like different types of monsters, activating different kinds of cards, where you do different things each game. Not like, for example, Bujins, where they just summon Yamato and protect it, like helmet decks kind of, sort of. I'm a little bit of a hypocrite here because I play ABCs, but it's just, when you just do the same thing over and over again and just summon and make the same board, it's just boring. Like, who wants to really do that? Summon some other stuff. Like, see what other things you can go into, and maybe you'll discover that you can actually make a more powerful board than you normally do. Now, of course, everybody's going to say, well, what if they can spam firewall dragons? Well, if they can spam firewall dragons, great. Go ahead. More power to you. But try to find something something other than what you're used to. Find something outside the box to do instead of the same generic one trick pony deck that you're used to. That's why I love Monarchs, for example, because like you have so many options as far as what cards need to get played when. It's not just Vanity's Fiend Turbo, because Vanity's Fiend isn't searchable. So you've got to kind of think on your feet 
and try to find more ways to get to your combo pieces, which I feel like makes you better as a player because you constantly have to know what to search out, when to get your pantheism, when to banish it, when to reveal stuff, you know, what to reveal off tenacity and that kind of thing. So yeah, just find different win cons other than just doing the same thing over and over and over again. Number four, don't play the same decks as everyone else. Coming off the heels of the regionals in Charlotte this last weekend, that I know people will play decks to win, but if you want to be creative, don't play the same decks as literally everyone else in the game. You can find decks that have win cons that are consistent that aren't just what's being played right now. Great example of this are heroes. You know, they summon Dark Law and they just win because they can activate stuff like Imperial Order and shut everyone down. You know, they can play anti-spell. Granted that I am a little bit of a hypocrite here because I just also told you not to play helmet decks, but heroes are consistent and they're not meta, but they're very good as an anti-meta deck because they are so consistent. I mean, heck, if you wanted to, you could play like Demise Heroes or something. I'm sure you could just summon a Shadow Mist and just set your mash change and then just activate Card of Demise and get a bunch of set cards. So it's probably really consistent. Yeah, just play something that is anti-meta, that isn't what everybody else is playing. All right, and the number five reason is probably one of the most obvious that I could think of, but a lot of people actually don't think about this. Number five, have fun. That's kind of why you play the game, for fun. And I feel like a lot of people actually don't really have fun when they're playing, like, the same generic meta top-tier decks. I play True King Dinos when they were around. Now, I couldn't afford Diagram, but you're running so many True Kings that you can just pop any baby in your hand. But point being, I was playing it and having fun because I enjoyed it. You know, it was fun to do. I like that deck. Now, other meta decks, maybe like stuff like Pendulum Magicians, is not so much my alley. ABCs is a great example because it's meta right now and I love the deck, but I don't just play it because it wins. I play it because I like it. And you can be more innovative with a deck that you like. So play something that you find fun and engaging. Anyway, guys, that is my top five ways to remain creative duelist. Uh, thank you so much for my man, the Creative Duelist, to let me upload on his channel, man. It's really cool of you to let me do that. Anyway, guys, my name is the DMD. It's me, it's me, it's that DMD. And I think Kamal will probably leave a link down to my channel in the description below. So if you like what I had to say, please definitely try to give my channel a look. Just glance around. And if you find something you like, maybe, I, maybe you'll stay for a long period of time and be a subscriber. Who knows? But anyway, guys, it's me, it's me, it's that DMD, and your boy is out.